All right, chapter four, repetition structures. What that means is basically we're going to cover loops and how they work in Python. Uh, here are all the topics. We'll try to cover the whole chapter today, but as always, we'll see. I'll see if I can cover all of it. If not, I'll just record the rest and I'll post it in the e-learning later. All right, intro to repetition structures. Let's see. Um, basically, why we would use loops. The, the very simple, very beginning of using repetition structures, you got to understand when to use them, why to use them, why they exist. And basically, with coding, everything is repetition. Everything that um, comes with coding it's basically repetition because you will write the same programs, you will write the same um, modules that are going to be performing the same action for you from one program to another program. So this is where the repetition structures come in. When you have to write a code within the same program that's going to repeat itself many times, instead of just writing it out every single for every single iteration, Everything that you have to do is just write one repetition structure that's going to duplicate that code within itself for you. Um, basically, the, the term is on the screen for you. The term is just repetition structure makes the computer repeat included code as necessary. Just think of it as something going on um, over and over and over again without you interrupting it without you needing to do anything. Just a structure that's going to repeat itself whenever you need it um, to repeat itself. Now, there are two types of loops. So the main ones that we're going to cover today are the condition control loops and count control loops. Now, with the condition control loops, think of decision structures. Think of decision structures. Um, remember when we used to have true or false conditions within our decision structures? So this is the same idea. You're going to have a loop that's going to be running based on a true false condition. So while the condition is true, the loop is going to iterate. Once the condition uh, turns to false, the loop will stop iterating. The loop will stop executing. And then the count control loops, it's very useful when um, you know exactly how many times your loop has to run. So in that case, the count control loops, is just going to repeat a specific number of times. So if you know how many times your loop should run, you will use a count control loop. If you do not know, uh, generally you will use the condition control loop. Now, the first loop, the most famous one is the while loop. The while loop exists in almost every single language, programming language there is. The while loop is the condition control loop. So while certain condition is true, we're going to do something. Some sort of code will keep executing. Now, the while loop consists of two parts. The first part is uh, the actual condition part. So while and then you will have a condition. And then the second part is going to be the statements that are going to be repeated. So the format is the same as um, our if structure, if decision structure. Instead of if, the only difference instead of if, we will have a while keyword instead of having the if keyword. This is how it looks inside of a flowchart. So again, we have our condition right here. It looks, everything looks exactly the same as in our if decision structure. However, at the end, instead of our uh, arrow going down to the end, we have our error going up. As you can see right here, it goes up and back to the very beginning of the condition. So what's going to happen? We're going to test some sort of condition. If it is true, we're going to perform some sort of code. And after that, we're going to come back and check again if the condition is true. And this will keep going, this loop will keep going until the condition inside of a diamond is false. Once it's false, we're just going to exit the loop and carry on with the rest of our program. Iteration, you've heard me saying the term iteration. Iteration is just one execution of the body of a loop. So uh, once everything that's inside of the loop executes one time, we say that one iteration has happened. There can be as many iterations as you want. However, it's very important to have um, your condition switch to false at some point uh, within those iterations. So after a certain iteration, your condition needs to switch to false because 
you will have an infinite loop. An infinite loop, uh, very bad. We do not want to have infinite loops in our programs because those do not have a way to terminate. Those loops run for basically forever until you close your program. Um, we do not want that because um, it's going to be bad for your program. It's going to interrupt the regular flow, flow of your program. You will never exit that loop. As, once you have an infinite loop, there's no way to exit it, and um, which means that there's no way to move forward with your program. So you need to include some sort of code that's going to stop your loop from iterating. And uh, I will show you examples of that. Uh, however, the one thing also to know about the while loop that it is a pretest loop. So there's also two types of loops, a pretest and a post-test loop. And it's basically in the name pretest loop means that you are testing a condition before uh, the iteration that happens within the, um, the, the loop. And the post-test, you're testing the condition after the iteration has happened. All right, here's an example of a uh, some program we starting right here and then we uh, assigning y to a variable called keep going. And then what we're checking, what our condition is, as long as keep going equals to y, we are going to do all of these operations. We're going to prompt the user to enter the amount of sales, prompt the user to enter the commission rate, then uh, calculate the commission that that user has display that commission and ask the user, do you want to calculate another commission? Enter Y for yes and assign the input to keep going. So as you can see, this one last, last um, thing that we are showing the user gives us an opportunity to exit this loop. So this loop will only keep going as long as the variable keep going equals to Y. If that variable is equal to anything else, our loop will stop executing and we will get to the end of our program. So this is, um, when I told you, I'll show you an example. This is a great example of having a way out of your loop uh, when you're interacting with the user. Just as long as you have a way out, you're all good, it's all fine, and you will not have an infinite loop. Uh, you can also use a while uh, loop uh, as a count control loop in Python. However, there's no a lot there's not a lot of usage for this loop because there are other ones in Python that are way better to use as a count control loop. Uh, however, you can use a while loop. The only thing that you will need is a counter variable that's going to count how many times the loop is running. And uh, when it comes to count control loops, you have to perform three actions. That loop has to perform three actions. So you have to have a counter variable and you have to anal initialize it to a certain starting value. So either zero or one or from whatever value you want to start, uh, doesn't really matter. It, de it heavily depends on your program. Then you have to compare that counter variable to the ending variable, ending value that uh, should be existing uh, when you're working with count control loops. Because again, remember that the count control loops, we're using them when we know how many times our, um, we know how many times our loop has to execute. So comparison, you have to compare it to the ending value. And then after that, during each iteration, you have to update your counter variable with a new value. What that usually means is you have to add plus one, to your uh, counter variable. And I will show you an example right here. So this is our initialization and equals zero. So we're choosing the starting value of zero. Here's the comparison. Our ending value is five and we're comparing n to that ending value. So while n is less than five, we're gonna print inside the loop the value of n is and whatever the value of n is at that point. And here's the update, the last step, we are updating our counter variable by adding one to it. So this, in this case, we always know that we will not have an infinite loop. However, if you didn't have this uh, line right here, what would happen, your n would always stay at zero and you would have an infinite loop because this value wouldn't be updated and this condition n less than five will always be equal to true. But because we have this right here, because we have n 
plus equals one, we don't have to worry about any infinite loops or anything like that. What this uh, loop will do is going to print inside the loop the value of n is zero. Then it's going to, during the first iteration, during the second iteration, we're going to update it. We're going to add one to it. So we're this loop is going to print one. After that, it's going to print two, three, and four. We're going to end at four because our condition is not does not include five. It only goes up to five without including it. Single line while loops, also a thing that exists in Python. If you are not doing much inside of your loop, you can totally put it all on one line. As you can see here, we have our counter variable n equals zero. While n is less than 10, we're just adding one to our counter variable. So we're not printing anything in this loop. We are just creating this loop to add one to our n um, with each iteration. The for loop. So this loop is the most popular loop when it comes to counter count controlled loops. Um, for is very useful when you know how many times you want your um, how many times you want your loop to execute, and it is designed to work with um, multiple data items such as arrays, lists. Doesn't really matter. If you have a sequence of data items, you probably will want to use for. Uh, with it. As you can see here, this is the general format, the keyword for. After that, you can uh, specify whatever variable you want. Uh, it doesn't really matter which name this variable has. Uh, in, also a keyword in, and then you will put the sequence of your items. So in for which items you want this loop to iterate. Basically what this loop is doing, iterates through each of the items that exist within that list. And after that, you can either do something to those variables, print them, or move them to a file. Doesn't really matter. You can do many things with these uh, exact um, data items that are within your sequence. Here's an example of your for loop. For each number that is in the array uh, of numbers one, two, three, four, five, we're going to print that number. During the first iteration, what's going to happen? we will look at the first uh, number inside of that list and it is one and what we're doing we're printing that number we're printing one now the second iteration we will look at the second one during the second iteration we're going to print two and so on and so on we're going to mo move on to three four and five so this is all that this loop is doing we're just going through each number in the list and automatically assigning it to the variable num. And we're just printing all of these um, values. Using the range function. Range function is also a very useful thing that exists in Python. Range is going to return to you uh, a iterable object. And what that means, just think of it as this right here. One, two, three, four, five. You can also consider it an iterable object. We can iterate through all of these numbers. So range will return us to us the same thing, a sequence of val values that we can iterate over. Now, there are three arguments that you can uh, specify within your range function. The first one is going to be the ending limit. Oh, actually, uh, never mind. The first one is going to be you specifying the starting value. Uh, let me see if there is an example of that. Yeah. So the first one is specifying the starting value. In this case, is 10. The second one, we're going to specify the uh, ending value. And the last one is going to be the step. So by how much we want to increase or decrease our starting value. In this case, we're going to be counting backwards in descending order. So our range will be from 10 to up to zero. And with each iteration of our loop, we're going to be um, taking one off of 10. So we're going to go from 10 to nine to eight and so on up until we go to zero. So this is all the range is doing. The range will just provide you a sequence of numbers to go through or to use within your uh, program. Let me see anything else useful. <clears throat> so with the range, uh, also a couple of things to note. If you're just specifying one argument, one argument will automatically, your, your range function will automatically assume that that is an ending limit. If you're not specifying anything else, if you just put one number. So for example, range 
here will be the your parentheses. If you will just specify 10 within those parentheses, what's going to happen? Uh, your program, your Python will assume that you want the range to be from 0 to 10. Now, two arguments is going to be the starting value and the ending value. So, for example, if we wanted to specify that same 0, we would have to put parentheses 0, comma, 10. This will specify the starting value of zero and the ending value of 10. Then three arguments, as I showed you in the last example, uh, you're just specifying the step value. So how much you want to add or just um, subtra subtract from the starting value. Uh, let's see, calculating a running total. Augmented assignment operators. So these are very useful. They're called also sometimes called shorthand operators. Uh, here's how you would use them. So instead of writing out this whole thing, x equals x plus five and so on and so on and so on. Instead of doing that, you can just use a shorter version. So instead of writing that out, you just have to write x plus equals five. So if you need to add some sort of value to your original uh, variable, all you have to do is just put whatever you want to add or destruct, uh, subtract or multiply or uh, perform division, doesn't really matter. Just put that uh, sign next to an equal value and whatever you want uh, value to be added, subtracted, multiplied, doesn't really matter. So x plus equals 5 is equivalent to x equals x plus 5. This is just a shorter version um, to uh, write just easier. The more you write it, the easier it gets. Uh, the more lines of code codes you write, the more time you're going to spend writing code. So these are just useful things to know that they exist in Python. Sentinel, a very important thing to know also. Sentinel is a value that's going to mark the end of the sequence of your item. So if you're working with an array or with a list, uh, Sentinel will mark the end of that list or the end of that array. Same thing works with files. Um, if you, for example, if you know the last line of a file, that last line of a file will be a sentinel, can be a sentinel for you. Or for example, if you know that there's nothing happening after that last line inside of that file, then the empty line can be also used as a sentinel because you know that an empty line means the end of a file. Input validation loops, uh, also a thing that is very important in Python when you're working with inputs from the user. So the computer, the general idea is that the computer cannot tell the difference between a user giving them bad data and the user giving them good data. If the user will provide bad input, the computer will not be able to tell that it's, it is a bad input. For example, uh, if you're asking the user to input their name and they will give you a number, Right. Instead of giving their name, such for example, my name Sonia. Instead of doing that, they will. I would put uh, twenty five um, as my name. Obviously, that is not my name, but the computer will not know that because um, it does not have a brain like we do. Uh, it is literally just a computer. It will not understand that a number is not the same thing as a name. However, you as a um, programmer can of can help the computer with understanding what is good and what is bad and the concept is garbage in garbage out if you're giving the computer garbage it will produce garbage back to you so when it comes to designing your program it is important to know uh, about validation loops now uh, what that means i will just show you an example so how the input validation loops work we're going to get some input from the user and then we're going to ask, is the input bad? If it is bad, we're going to display an error message. We're going to get the input again, and we're going to come back all the way to the beginning, and we're going to ask the same question again. As long as the input bad, we will not let our program continue executing. So only when the input is good, only then we will uh, continue with our program. In uh, the example that I uh, told you with the name and the numbers, uh, the example of an input validation loop would be uh, only accepting a string. Because if you only accepted a string for the user to type their name, if they typed any sort of number, then uh, 
uh, we would know that a number is not a string, right? An integer is not the same as a string. So your computer would know, oh, I'm seeing a number. This is not a string. Let's ask the user again. Please enter your name. So that would be a great example of an input validation loop. Now, nested loops, uh, also we covered them a little bit in PLD 101. So nested loops are just a loop inside of a loop that also exists. Think, think of a clock. A clock works like a nested loop. Uh, we have 60 minutes and we have 60 seconds. So we have, um, and, and again, we have 12 hours. So a hand will move for 12, uh, for a round of 12 movements. And then after that, uh, each hour will um, consist of 60 minutes and each minute will consist of 60 seconds. Sure, just think of all of those uh, arms that are moving on a clock. Here is an example of how that would look uh, inside of a flow chart. As you can see, these are just all nested loops. So by the, uh, you can easily count how many loops are uh, inside of a flow chart by counting how many arrows return to in front of the decision structures. In this case, it's three, one, two, three. So you know that these are three loops and they all um, are nested. So there are two loops nested within one loop. Let's see, break. Also one thing that is important, break. Break statement will cause a loop to terminate. So once you go get to the break statement, it usually is used with an if decision structure. Once you get to the break, your loop will stop. So this is another example of using a something to not make the infinite loop, to not create the infinite loop. So in this case, the break statement um, is used if n it reaches five. Once n reaches five, we're gonna use our break and we're gonna say the loop stopped and n is five. Continue. Continue is similar to break, but instead of uh, ending the whole loop, we're gonna just end the current iteration. So instead of, uh, so just think of it, break stops the whole loop, continue just stops the iteration, one iteration of that loop. So you can see right here, uh, continue if n uh, modulo three will equal to zero. So if we divide the number n by three and we get a remainder of zero, we're gonna end the current iteration. As you can see here, we have one, two. Once we get to three, three is not printed, right? Even though it's supposed to be printed, but because we have our continue statement right here, our iteration is ended before we get to the print, state, print statement. So you don't see three, you don't see six, and you also don't see nine because of the continue statement. Uh, loops in Python can have an optional else clause and the optional else clause uh, only useful when your loop contains a break statement. So once you get to um, the end of your loop and if you do not encounter the break statement, you will execute your else. Now, if you encounter the break statement, uh, well, that in that case, this whole thing will be terminated and you will just continue going with your program with whatever is after your whole loop. Let me see. Oh, that is it. All right, let me stop sharing. Stop recording. <laughs>